G'day, I'm John Harlan Kim. Uh, feel free to join in uh, on the season four fun of The Librarians later this year on TNT. You are watching the new release Wednesday show. What's going on world? It's your boy Patrick Michael Strange. This is the new release Wednesday show. We're here at Baltimore Comic Con 2017. <laughs> And I girl, got my girl Natasha. From the Nerd Element. The Nerd Element. She's out here representing with me because we have an awesome friend. Because she's a super fan girl over um, the librarians. Oh, yeah. And when she told me that, yo, you're going to talk to John? You're going to talk to John? <laughs> this is John Harlem Kim, y'all. Hey, hey, the no. librarians is in the house. John, pleasure to have you on. Pleasure to be here. Awesome. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the librarians. How about when you first got the call to get the gig? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh -oh. The God is speaking. <laughs> We're live at Baltimore Comic Con, y'all. This, yeah, this is what, is what we do. That's what, that's what happens. That's good timing. I, I didn't know Colossus was here until he spoke to me. <laughs> Shout out to my man Stefan. Stefan, am I mispronouncing? Steph, we love you, bro. You can catch his interview too after this because we're trying to kill time because the voice of God wants some more. <laughs> Enjoying the show, John? Yeah, 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 loving it, yeah. Have you been to Baltimore Comic Con before? No, I, I've never even been to Baltimore, so this is kind of cool. Awesome. Uh, I only found out like a week ago that I was coming in, so... Oh, excellent. Uh, Literally a week ago, and that's yeah. when I got my ticket to come here. And that's what she told me. She found out you were... I have to be there. <laughs> I just have. It's yeah. just John. <laughs> yeah. No, it was cool. So, uh, I was in Japan, and uh, yeah, we got the call, and yeah, it was sort of my first chance to come to a, a con by myself, and someone had mentioned that Baltimore was a great starter con, good numbers, but not too crazy, so... Yeah, and it's kind of nice because the rest of the guests are so sweet and lovely and yeah, it's a good time So I'm really wrapped to be here. Definitely. So as we were saying before the voice of God took over uh -huh. Getting the call for librarians. How was that? Yeah, good. I had just done my first US pilot season and uh, Got back to Australia uh, Struck out of most things and then essentially we got sent the brief for Ezekiel Jones and yeah uh, Sent in an audition tape and two days later. I received a call saying that I booked it so yeah, we kind of, I remember I had a friend over at the time and, and mum was in the house and we all just started jumping and that's going awesome. insane, yeah, so that's a good time. Awesome. So going from the Pacific and I was looking into your career, because yeah. I'm an actor as well, oh, you kind of give yeah. me hope as an uncredited actor, I've done a lot of work. Yeah. And here you are, uncredited actor on uh, the Pacific yep. and now to being on the librarians. Let's talk a little bit about your character on the show. Uh, yeah, Ezekiel Jones is a brash, young, irresponsible... Thief extraordinaire. Yeah, <laughs> flies by the seat of his pants. Um, but uh, I would say definitely sort of as the seasons have gone, we're now up to season four. He's developed some sort of sensibility. He's a softy a little bit. Yeah, he's, he's caring a little bit more about his, his newfound family. So that's kind of cool to be able to play something where initially he was definitely one dimensional and now you sort of see that. that. God's taking over again. <laughs> he's Michael. John wants to know why you're interrupting. <laughs> All right, go ahead, John. Yeah, yeah, so, no, it's kind of cool to sort of, you sort of see as you go along that he, the character develops and you realize that that cocky, arrogant attitude is just a front he puts on, and yeah, every season they sort of give a little bit more of the reason. A little bit, yeah. and that you kind of sacrificed yourself just a little bit, I think it was in yep. season two. Yeah, point of salvation. Yes, yep, yes, yep. yes, yes, and, and I was video like, game that, I think that was the turning point for me. We were like, oh my gosh, he's smart. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. He's starting to care. That was the payoff, absolutely, yeah. So um, it's, it's kind of nice, and then season three we saw more and more, and yeah, coming up, uh, our new season hasn't got an airing date yet, but uh, when it does, we've already finished uh, filming, and I, I can't wait for you guys to see it. It's honestly, it's, it's going to be awesome. Tweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fun to live yeah. tweet with them, seriously. I'll be around. <laughs> Is there anything more you want to see? Let me do your, give your fans your question. Stop me, do you still miss him? Uh, I cry in my car every day about Stumpy. Yeah, Do you Stumpy. have like a, a stuffed animal, or like a stuffed Stumpy with you? Like, no. Has anyone create, create a stuffed Stumpy? That's exactly what we need. Sell it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I um, I tried to take the real Stumpy home, but uh, props wasn't having any of that. Um, Boom. But when we were doing photo opportunities yesterday, one of the ladies yeah, had a, a I need a shirt. I need that shirt. T-shirt and. Uh, yeah, I was kind of wigging out. That was kind of cool to see that there was some Stumpy support here because it's a very special place in my heart. <laughs> awesome. Want to talk about any other projects you have going on that you're looking forward to doing? Um, or you still, still got the schedule with librarians is kind of taking over at the moment? Yeah, no, no, no. We, uh, I, last season I actually ended up borrowing uh, Dean Devlin's cameras and sort of going uh, into producer mode in a way. So I shot my own project over three days. Uh, and that's uh, got uh, some pretty good names. Arden Cho, Aaron Jackie Benko, Reggie Lee. 
Uh, so yeah, fingers crossed that uh, gets really? finished up soon. And oh, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, do you have I, a name for that? No, I, uh, right now it's untitled, untitled John Kim. Okay. Name. Yeah. So, so uh, we'll see how that goes. But um, yeah, beyond that, um, yeah, that season four of librarians and, and uh, trying to spend as much time back home. And, Awesome. Tied up right now. Yeah. I want to ask you a question as an Asian actor myself. Yep. And Asian representation. Yep. And there's a whole big thing. I'm also uh, with the group, the Nerds of Color. Shout out to my the Nerds of Color out there. We had a whole thing about you know Asian representation and yep. whitewashing. Yeah. Uh, want to talk about that? Has that have you experienced any of that? How do you feel about that? Um, and diversity in cinema. I mean, it's such a broad thing, so I try to keep it as, as minimal as I can. But okay. um, obviously, diversity is at the forefront of the conversation right now. And as far as being uh, of Asian descent, it's almost like the first time light's been shed on that particular race. So uh, I definitely found um, some more opportunities have come up lately, but um, it's still it's still a, a long way to go. Obviously, the, the Ed Gray incident was uh, a big example that was set for you know someone who felt as though that was that story needed to be told in its rightful way. And so um, yeah, at the end of the day, I think it's something that's changing and it's getting better. But um, ultimately, we still have such a long way to go, and it, it's like anything worth changing. It's going to take some time. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do appreciate it because. The reason it is important is you want to see um, of any gender, race, nation, religion, you you want to still feel like you can do whatever it is you want. You want to feel like you can be courageous, you can fall in love, you can be uh, a hero. And, and, and a lot of the stories, um, yeah, I, just a very personal one is obviously I have a very close, um, almost like a nephew, uh, who uh, is half Russian, half Korean. And, Unfortunately, he doesn't have any Avengers to point up to. He doesn't have any, exactly. any DC or anything. So, uh, to the point that even uh, uh, the kids at school actually make him feel like he has to play the bad guy because there's on occasion yes. a lot of Asian villains. So, yes. so um, you know, and, and you're, you're six years old and you're getting told that you're, you know, you know, it, it has an effect on you. And you, you if, at the moment. I feel like that you're interfering with someone else's experience on planet Earth because of your ideas about what they should be. That's when you've got the, that's the line right there, and you crossed it. So I mean, that's a it's, a it's an issue that's close to my heart. It's it's, it's part of my fight, and yeah, I mean. Um, uh, fingers crossed by the time I get to leading man age, um, you know, there's more opportunities for guys like us. Yeah. I think you could definitely be a hero. And you're already a hero on Librarians. Yeah, so, yeah he's a hero, but I want to eventually have him as a main character. Like, yeah. <laughs> that would be uh, ideal, but until then, you know, I'm stoked to be a part of the show and then I'm, I'm stoked to be here in Baltimore right now, so things awesome. are good. Awesome. Since Last question, since we're at Baltimore Comic Con, if you could have one superpower yeah. and be a superhero on a TV show, what would it be, or a film? What superpower power would you like to have? Uh, oh, that's a tough one. There's so many. You Flight, want. trip, teleportation. No, I, I'm, I gotta, super strength. Uh, I'm a little scared of heights, so flight would be <laughs> off, the, off, the, off the table. Um, okay. Honestly, um, I think shape shifting would be fun. Ah, Especially a uh, mystique action. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, ironically, working with Rebecca Romain, uh, just wanting to steal her powers. So really. Shout out yeah. to Rebecca. Yeah, yeah. No, I would love to. Um, be able to, I, I, I'm thinking selfishly, but yeah, to show up to an audition and be able to just look however you want, that would be, uh, yeah, mm, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? There. Who would you want to shape shift like the most? Like, who do you want to like? Be, who would, I would want to be the most? Yeah. Um, probably someone like Shaq, you know, you walk around, you know, yeah, yeah. You're physically imposing, I can yeah. go play in the NBA for a couple of years, so Definitely. yeah. yeah that'd you get be, his talent too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if that's the way it works. If you shapeshift, you also get their like abilities, like as far as sports. And, <laughs> so yeah, that would be cool. We'll see how it goes, but um, yeah, that would probably be it. <laughs> awesome, John. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Why don't we throw up a uh, if you can give like some of your URLs? I'm gonna make it magically appear as you see them, oh, where yeah. they can check you out, follow like you along on the mind. bottom. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's my superpower right now. Yeah, <laughs> check it out. Right uh, here. Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook are all at John Harlan Kim. So. Easy does it. Yeah. Check him out. John, thank you for coming yeah, on the show. Absolutely. Natasha, the nerd element. Yes. The thank super you. fan girl. <laughs> she loves you, John. <laughs> and I'm Patrick. And now I love you. <laughs> <laughs> love, you, love. You're watching the new release Wednesday show. And you are here at Baltimore Comic Con 2017.